In this video, I want to do one problem in uh, detail, which is uh, very useful to understand basic notions of group theory, because many of the properties that we have so far learned are used in this problem. And it, uh, if you understand this problem fully, it is uh, very good and it will tell you that you have understood everything that has so far been covered. Okay, so, the problem that I want to discuss in this video is the following. Show that any group G of order less than or equal to 5 is abelian. So, that is the problem. So, I am going to recall some terms here that I covered in earlier videos. What is the order of a group? So, re recall that if G is a group and uh, actually if G is a finite group, if G is a finite group, the order of G which is denoted by this symbol G within bars is the number of elements in G. Okay, so, order of G is the number of elements in G. So, in the problem, the question is to show that every group which has order less than or equal to 5, meaning any group which has 5 or fewer number of elements is abelian. And what is abelian? G is abelian if A B equals B A for all A comma B in G. So, we, we say we say that A and B commute So, the symbol that A B equals B A in words means that A and B commute with each other, which is to say that the order in which we multiply them uh, is irrelevant for the final answer. So, G is abelian if every pair of elements in the group commute with each other. And this is a property that groups have and not every group is abelian, that also I want to recall before we got to solving this problem. If you recall the uh, group S 3 symmetric group on 3 letters is the group of bijections of a 3 element set, uh, which we denoted by 1 to 3. And if you recall in the earlier video, where I discussed S 3 in detail, we actually listed all the elements of S 3 and um, understood some facts about these elements. We saw that order of G was 6 and uh, S 3 was not abelian. Okay, so, if you go back to an earlier video, you will see that uh, we, we have explicitly showed that there exist two elements in S 3 such that they do not commute. Okay. So, that uh, S 3 is not abelian and it has 6 elements and the problem asks you to show that any group which is smaller than that. meaning having 5 elements or 4 elements or 3 elements or 2 elements or 1 element must be abelian. So, the smallest uh, group which is not abelian is of order 6, which is S 3. So, now let us go ahead and solve the problem. So, let us solve it. So, the basic idea of the solution is the following. We are going to show essentially that if you if a group has 5 elements or less, there are just not too many elements just not enough elements for a pair to not commute with each other. Okay, remember that if a group is not abelian, it must be the case that there exists two elements that do not commute with each other. So, maybe I should write this. So, if G is not abelian, because the definition remember is that if G is abelian, if so the definition is that G is abelian if you give me any pair of elements a comma b in the group a b equals b a. This must be true for all elements a comma b. So, what is the contrapositive of this? If g is not abelian, there exist two elements, let us say a comma b in g, which do not commute with each other. So, such that 
a b is not equal to b a and the goal for us in this solution is to show that if a group has 5 or less number of elements they cannot have just that is not as 5 is too small a number to admit two elements which have this property which do not commute with each other. So, we are going to consider uh, 5 cases we note that a group is a non empty set because a group has to contain the identity element that is one of the properties of a group. So, group has at least one element in our problem we have to show that any group which has less than or equal to 5 elements is abelian. So, we will consider cases the first case order of g is 1. If order is 1 that means, there is exactly one element in g and every group must contain the identity element. So, it must be e and this is certainly abelian why you can see this it is very easy to see it is abelian because in order to be not abelian there must be two elements which do not commute with each other, but the g has only one element. So, there is no question of having two elements which do not commute with each other. So, this is ok this is very easy case 2 order of g is 2. So, uh, let us uh, let us enumerate these elements. So, as I said earlier every group contains e. So, that must be the identity is one of the elements. Okay. Now, in this case there is a one more element which we will call a. So, that means, e and a are the two distinct elements of this group. So, note that in particular we have a is different from e right because g has two elements one is e the other we are calling a. So, certainly a is different from e. Now, if g is not abelian again let me remind you if g is not abelian there exist two elements which do not commute with each other. If in this case if g is not abelian that means e and a do not commute with each other, but that is certainly not the case I mean e and a do commute with each other because every element in a group commutes with identity right. So, recall that in general any element in a group commutes with the identity element. So, E A is A E that is part of the definition of a group that A which are both individually equal to remember A. So, G is abelian in this case also right because the only two elements are there and they commute with each other. So, G is abelian. So, in this case G is an abelian group. So, we are done with order 1 order 2 we have to still consider order 3 4 5. So, case 3 order is 3 by the same convention as in the previous case I am going to enumerate and give names to the elements E is one element that is the identity element. Let us pick A as the second element and let us pick B as the third element. So, as before we have E A B are distinct elements in other words A is different from E b is different from e and a is different from b. They, these are the, g has three different elements and I am calling them e a b. e is the identity element a and b are non identity elements. Okay, now, again if g is not abelian it means that there exist two elements which do not commute with each other. So, only possibility in this case must be a and b because a and e commute and b and e commute the question is do a and b commute do a and b commute. So, let us do the following. So, let us uh, look at what can be a b. So, what can be a b? By which I mean remember g is a group and I have given already names to its three elements g is a group of order 3 and I have already given names to its three elements. I have called the identity by E, the other two elements by A and B, but G is a group and A and B are two elements. So, A B must be in the group. A 
a b is an element in the group right because we have a binary operation on the group a and b are there and when you perform the binary operation on a and b the output is again in g so a b is an element in the group which is just e comma a comma b so we have three possibilities a b must be e a b must be a a b must be b so either this or this or this right a b is an element of the group which has three elements listed as e comma a comma b so it is either e or a or b so can it be a now i'm going to you invoke a very important property that we have in a group that we discussed in an earlier video namely cancellation property so if a b equal to a multiply both sides by a inverse so we have a inverse ab a inverse a note that a inverse is also one of the three elements but i don't need to actually uh, consider which is which it is is a e a or b i don't care what it is it is an element in the group so i can multiply by that right which is going to give me by associativity i can do a inverse a which cancels and i get b equals e right so in the cancellation property directly gives this right because if a b a b equals a a is nothing but a times e then i cancel a i have just spelled it out but this is what we have but is b equal to e certainly b is not equal to e because they are distinct elements so this is not possible so this is not possible i'll say that so ab cannot be a similarly ab cannot be b because the cancellation property says b is equal to be i cancel b and i get a equals e right but a can't be equal to this this can't happen this is not the case because the three distinct elements are called e and a and b so a can't be same as e otherwise we would not have given it a new name so this can't happen so ab must be e but if ab is equal to b ab equals to e rather ab is equal to e so this means that b is a inverse remember that if ab equals e b is a inverse and automatically b a must be e so a and b commute so the point here is that the important point just like i said earlier that every element commutes with the identity an element and its inverse always commute with each other that is the point so in this case a and b are inverses of each other and they commute so ab equal to ba if ab equal to ba then g must be abelian right because if g remember if g is not abelian there must exist two elements in it which don't commute with each other in our case g is a group of three elements e commutes with a e commutes with b only possible violation of abelianness is if a and b don't commute with each other but we have just concluded that a and b commute with each other so g is abelian so we are done with case 3 so now case 4 so that means order is 4 so let me now do the following so i'm going to write g as um okay so g has four elements right let's call them a b c Uh, the non identity elements are abc but now i will uh, do the following suppose g is not uh, actually let me take that back so i don't want to list enumerate these elements at this point so suppose g is not abelian
right. Suppose g is not abelian, then by the point that I mentioned at the beginning of the proof or beginning of the solution, there exist a comma b in g such that a b is not equal to b a. This is the definition of group g not being abelian. But now, what are the, but g has only 4 elements that is what we are going to invoke. What, what would be the elements of g? e is an element of g and a b or second and third elements are of g must be, e a b must be 3 distinct elements of g. Why are they distinct? See, because a and b do not commute with each other, neither of a and b must can be e, because if a is e, b and e will commute. Similarly, if b is e, a and b will commute, because every element commutes with e and a b do not commute with each other, they are different from e. Not only that, a and b are also distinct, right, because if a and b are equal, not a must be different from b. Why is that? Because if a equals b, then what is a b? Then a b is just a squared, but that is also same as b a. So, a and b commute, right, but I am assuming that a and b do not commute. So, a and b must be different. So, e a b must be three distinct elements of g, but g has only four elements. So, there is room for only one more element and I claim that that must be a b. So, now what must be a b? By the previous case, we have said that a b, so what can be a b? a b has to be e, can it be e? Let us explore that, can it be a, can it be b? Okay. So, can a b be e? If a b is e, a and b are inverses of each other, right. If a b is e, they are inverses of each other and hence, though they commute, but that is clearly wrong because I am assuming that they do not commute. So, a b cannot be e. A b cannot be a because of the same cancellation property that we discussed in the previous case. B is must be e, but b is not equal to e. So, that cannot happen. Similarly, in this case a must be e, which cannot happen. So, a b, so the conclusion is, so we conclude a b must be the fourth element of g. So, g must be a e a b a b, right, because we have already we already have three elements e, a, b and a, b cannot be any of them, a, b cannot be e, a, b cannot be a, a, b cannot be b. So, a, b must be the fourth element, okay. but now what has to be b a, but what is b a? <coughs> b a is also in the group, right. So, b a can be e, but if b a is e, the same problem happens, b and a are inverses of each other and hence they commute, which is not possible. So, b a cannot be e, b a cannot be a for the same reason as before and b a cannot be b. So, b a must be a b, right. So, again contradicting the hypothesis. So, we cannot have in other words, so you, is it clear? So, b a must be one of the four elements because there, there is no, no more room in the group group has only four elements and we have already identified four distinct elements, but b a cannot be e because in that case they are inverses of each other and they commute, b a cannot be a, b a cannot be b and b a has to be a b in which case they commute with each other. So, it is a contradiction. So, the hypothesis that we started with that there exist two elements a b such that a b is not equal to b a is wrong. In other words, g must be abelian. So, case 4 is also done. So, in case 4, 
we have concluded that G is abelian. So, finally, case 5. So, I want to show that in the case of order 5 group, it is abelian. So, what I will now do is the following. So, uh, I will use the properties that I mean uh, the work that I have already done. So, let us say E. Uh, okay, so again, I I don't want to start with this. So suppose G is not abelian, right? If G is not abelian, then this is exactly as in the case four. There exist two elements A comma B in G such that A B is not B A. Okay. So, now I claim that we must have that the 5 elements recall that G has only 5 elements of G must be E the identity element A B A B and B A. Why is this? Remember that A and B are elements that do not commute with each other. So, they are different from E. So, you have 3 elements here and just as in the case 4, A B cannot be E because if A B is E, A and B commute with each other being the inverses of each other. So, it cannot be E, it cannot be A, it cannot be B. So, A B is a fourth element, but now in the case 4 that is done and B A must be one of them and it has to be a billion, but now we have room for one more element B A cannot be E because B and A are not inverses of each other, it cannot be A, it cannot be B and it, it is not equal to A B also because A B and A and B do not commute. So, so in other words this is G, so G is Okay, so, this is our first observation G must be like this, we, we are going to come get a contradiction. So, I am going to uh, make a series of observations. So, first, so I will claim that A B A, okay, so what is A B A? Remember that I want to, okay, so maybe I will write it as a claim. A B A is B and B A B is A. So, this is my claim. So, what is the proof of this? So, and this is exactly as before. So, I am going to systematically eliminate all other possibilities. So, I will do one of them, the other being exactly similar to this. So, what is A B A? Okay, remember A B A is an element of the group. So, it must be one of E, A, B, A, B or B, A. So, suppose we have 5 possibilities, right. So, A, B, A is A let us say. Okay. So, then uh, just look closely at this equation. So, we, we can read this in two ways. So, we have A times B, A is A and A, B times A sorry, I am considering the case E. So, I am going to consider each possibility. A B A must be an element of the group. So, it is one of these 5 elements. So, suppose it is E. So, A times B A is E, A B times A is E, right. But this is a problem now, because if A times B A is E, then B A is A inverse. And here, A B is B in A inverse, right. This equation suggests that B A is A inverse, this equation suggests that A B is A inverse. But remember, when we discussed properties of groups in an earlier video, we have shown that A inverse is unique. For any element in a group, the inverse is unique. But A inverse is both B A and A B, but this means that A B is equal to B A, which is not the case, right. So, A B A cannot be E. So, this cannot happen. Ok. 
can it be I am claiming it is B. So, let us say can it be A. So, this is not possible correct is it clear A B and B A cannot be both be inverses of A. So, A B A is not E. So, that we have concluded can A B A be equal to A. So, I, I have uh, I have A B A has four possibilities right E five possibilities E A B A B B A. It has no choice it has to be one of these five elements. I have concluded that it cannot be A. Can it be A? Is it cannot be E. I have concluded it cannot be E. Can it be A? It cannot be because if it is A I can cancel A and conclude that B A is E. But if B A is E a b must also be e because a and b are inverses of each other and they commute. So, it cannot be a. Can it be a b? If it is a b then I cancel a then I cancel b I get a equals e. This is also not possible. So, it cannot be a b. Can it be b a? It cannot be again I can cancel b and a and I have a equals e. Right, so it can't be B. So A B A must be B. This is the only possibility left. So A B A is B. This is proved. And exactly the same proof gives me B A B equals A. I have to systematically eliminate all possibilities. It can't be E. It can't be B. It can't be A B, and it can't be B A. So let me not prove that because it's very similar to this. So I have shown that A B A equals B. B A B equals A. <laughs> Next, I will claim that. So, I think I called it uh, 1. I will claim 2 a squared equals b squared. I claim this. So, claim a squared equals b squared. Why is this true? Remember, I have shown that a b a equals b. Let me multiply by b on the left. what do I get? So, I get b a b a equals b squared. I have also proved in the first step b a b equals a. Now, multiply by a on the left, on the right. So, I get b a b a equals a squared, right. So, b a b a equals b squared, b a b a equals a squared. So, a squared equals b squared. Now, the third part of the proof, I, I, I want to show that there is no room for a squared. So, let us see a squared what is a squared. Okay, so, that is what I want to now do. a squared, if a squared so, again there are five possibilities right E, A, B, A, B, B, A. So, let me immediately rule out everything other than E. Suppose E A squared is A right. This means I cancel A, one copy of A. So, that means A equals C because A squared is A star A equals A. So, that means A equal to A. E. So, that is not possible because A is a distinct element. Can A squared be B? If A squared is B, A squared is also equal to B squared, right? So, B squared is B because A squared is B squared and A squared is B, A B squared is B. That means B is E. That is not possible. So, A squared cannot be E, B. A squared cannot be B. Can A squared be A B? If A squared is A B, I cancel A on both sides to get a equal to b, which is also not possible, a and b are distinct elements. So, a squared cannot be a b, can a squared be b a, that would give me cancelling a, again a equal to b, which is also not possible. So, a squared cannot be a, b, a, b or b a. 
So, a squared must be a. Okay. Now, if you recall the first part what we have shown was recall b a b was a. This was proved right in the earlier part b a b equals a. Now, let us multiply by b on the left, no on the right. If I multiply by b on right, I get b a b a is a b, right, but b a uh, sorry I am multiplying by b. So, b a b b is a b, but what is b b? So, this gives me b a b squared is a b, but b squared is also e. If a squared is e, that is equal to b squared. So, I have shown that a squared equals b squared. So, b a b squared is a b, but b squared is e. So, b a equals a b, but this is a contradiction because I have started with elements a b which do not commute with each other. So, a b and b a cannot be equal to each other. So, again we conclude that a uh, g is abelian g being any group of order 5. Okay, so, just to recap, recap what we have done. We, we wanted to show that any group of order 5 is abelian and we have started considering order 1 which was very easy, order 2 was also very easy, order 3 was also fairly easy, order 4 was not difficult also because we easily concluded that there is not enough room order 5 required a little bit of work, but again we conclude that by systematically using all the properties that a group satisfies that g is abelian. So, I wanted you to focus and I wanted to do this in detail because it is a very good example. It illustrates the key points of a group and the point that you must keep in mind and I keep emphasizing in this course is that we are studying abstract groups. Okay. These are groups though many of the examples of groups that we know are familiar to us integers, real numbers, rational numbers, functions, rotations, roots of unity, complex numbers. The point is these are only examples. We want to develop a theory for abstract groups. So, we, we cannot and we should not use any property that the specific examples have we should only use properties that a group by definition has namely that it has an inverse namely that it has identity namely that binary operation is associative that it's closed and those are the four those are the four important axioms definition they are part of the definition and after that you have concluded that there's a unique identity there's a unique inverse for every element using these properties we are able to and only using this property so if you recall and revise what happened in this video. Nowhere have we used the property that it is an integer or real number or a function. Everywhere we have only used group theoretic properties and we have concluded that in order to achieve non abelianness, in other words in order to produce two distinct elements that do not commute with each other, you must go up to 6 order at least. And in order 6 we do have a non abelian group namely S 3. So, please uh, go over this carefully and make sure that you understand everything here and uh, that will be a good way for you to make sure that you are comfortable with the basic definition and properties of groups. And I will stop this video now. In the next video, we are going to learn about subgroups of a group and study properties of subgroups and look at various examples. Thank you.